Hello friends. In this video, I shall talk to you about the use of interventional methods for managing patients having chronic and recurrent chyluria. The interventions in chyluria are employed whenever a conservative treatment has failed or a patient has a persistent moderate or severe chyluria. The first intervention that we do in all patients is what is called as renal pelvic installation sclerotherapy. If we find success, as we find a large number of patients, the patient is put on follow up. If there is a recurrence which is common, then the patient requires an another session of renal pelvic installation scleral therapy and I put here silver nitrate because that's what we do and then you can follow up this patient but if patient is failing you have done renal pelvic installation therapy and patient has not responded at all you are instilling drug and patient is going on with the chyluria that's kind of failure for the treatment then the patient requires a surgical intervention to treat. Also, those patients who have second recurrence should also go for surgery. So this is the algorithm that we follow for employing interventional methods in the management of chronic, persistent, moderate or severe chyluria. <clears throat> what is this? Renal pelvic installation sclerotherapy. This means that we instill some chemical compound in the renal pelvis, which from within the renal pelvis will seep into the lymphatic fistula and act as lymphatic sclerosant. The indication is failure of conservative management, and many patients require this. How does this work? When you inject this compound, any compound, and it goes into the lymphatic passages, it sets in a chemical lymphangitis and there occurs edema and lymphatic fistula get occluded. Initially, they are occluded because of the edema of the entima and protein coagulation. But later on, this acute occlusion is replaced by chronic fibrosis. So the blockade due to edema will give you the immediate relief and healing by fibrosis will give you permanent remission. If this is the, the renal pelvis here and the patient develops pyelolymphatic fistulae, the lymphatic passages are opening in the renal pelvis and if you see here, this is the fistulous communication connecting in the pelvis and that is how the chyle leaking in the collecting system as droplets. The chyle will flow down the ureter, right, to manifest as clinical chyluria. Or even in some patient, it can even form a coagulum, a cast and a clot. Because of a large amount of fibrin in it, large amount of protein in it, it forms a chylus coagulum, chylus clot, which is passed down the ureter to give you clot colic. Or when it is in the bladder, it gives rise to chylus urinary retention. So what we do, we place a ureter catheter with the help of cystoscopy after lateralizing from which side the chyle is coming, this side is catheterized, the ureter catheter goes up in the pelvis and we do a retrograde pyelogram to assess the capacity of the renal pelvis. It is 5 cc, 8 cc, 10 cc, variable in number of patients and then we inject into this system a sclerosant like that which will fill up the pelvis and then from pelvis it will go into the lymphatic passages in a backward manner and after that it will set in the bracket of these fistulous communication and that is how the uh, procedure works. Here is a, a case of pyelolymphatic fistula before the treatment by renal pelvic installation. You can see large number of communications. And here is another retrograde pyelogram 
after the sclerotherapy has been done, it shows complete absence of the fistulae. Now, what chemical sclerosant you should use? Although not approved medically by FDA, but silver nitrate 1% solution has been used since ages. And I have myself used this for last more than 35 years for treating these patients. We use nearly 1% of the solution. And uh, as I said, we should instill the proper amount. And the amount is assessed by obtaining a retrograde palygram picture of the pelvic system and knowing the a capacity of the renal pelvis. It's kind of a virtual assessment, guess. Only one side should be injected in a patient, even if the patient is having bilateral chyluria. And the sclerosin should be instilled very, very slowly in the pelvis, not injected with force. If you inject with force, it can have serious consequences. And once you have instilled the seminate rate, you should flush the uterine catheter with distilled water, not with saline. Right? And the schedule is very, very variable. There are many centers who will do only single installation. There are centers who will do three installations. Admit the patient for a day, three at eight hour interval, three sessions. People like our center will do six installations, even nine installations. So this has remained a unanswered question. Before I move to the protocol, let me tell you a little bit about a silver nitrate solution which I have used for last so many years without any problem. It is a 1% solution and it is a colorless, odorless, crystalline material, highly soluble in water. So it can form a transparent liquid. It is light sensitive. So it is supplied in an amber colored bottle so that it is not exposed to the light. If it is exposed to sunlight, then it will have some changes. The boiling point of this solution is 440 degrees centigrade. So you can easily sterilize this by autoclaving. You can have a bottle and in your own hospital, it make it sterilized by autoclaving. And then you can keep it by the bedside of the patient, even at room temperature, it is stable. So these are certain physical properties of the seminated solution, which are to our advantage. The number of installations, as I said, remain highly controversial. And we evaluated seminated installation sclerotherapy efficacy in our own institution. And sometime back, uh, this was long time back, I would say in 2003, we published this paper and we found that three eight hourly installations for one day is minimum. And you can go up to six and go up to nine installations over a period of three days and this will give you success in over 81% of patients. When you use Sivanatin as an agent for installation therapy, you should know some side effects which it can cause. It will cause flank pain at the time of injection. So you have to top it up with some analgesics before you start installing anything in the renal pelvis. In some patients, it can create interstitial nephritis, right? Or even papillary damage. It can incite hemorrhage on the renal pelvis. And there are cases in literature where silver nitrate has formed a cast in the renal pellicalysis system. I have never encountered this complication. I think this must be those days when a very high concentration of silver nitrate was used. And people have reported strictures in ureter and fornices, calicial system, even acute renal failure and even death following silver nitrate installation in literature. As I said, I have never encountered any such complication with the use of silver nitrate. And I use it left and right. Provided your concentration is 1%, you are safe, you are fine. There's another objection against the use of silver nitrate that it may affect the renal function of the kidney. So we did BMSA scan pre-installation and four weeks post-installation. 
and we published this paper uh, about five years back. Does endoscopic sclerotherapy in filial caluria affect renal function and morphology? So, and we found that the dilated renal function does not deteriorate by more than 5%. If at all any, it does not deteriorate more than 5%. Those of us who are a little skeptical about using silver nitrate have used many other substances like poridone iodine solution, sodium iodide, potassium bromide, even 50% dextrose, 76% urorafin contrast, which is used to do retroid pyrogram or even hypertonic saline. People who have used these compounds say that they have equal efficacy, but I have no personal experience of using any of these. And our work has found place in the Campbell textbook where uh, this experience has been mentioned. Now then, what is the treatment progression? Progression means if you have done renal pelvic installation sclerotherapy and patient is either, either not responding or relapsing after that, what will you do? So you have done conservative methods, it failed, you move to sclerotherapy, endoscopic, renal pelvic installation, 7 nitrate therapy, this also failed, you then move to a surgical treatment. I have done lots of open lymphatic or pelvic disconnection. My colleagues today do a laparoscopic work, which I am very happy with the result and the way they do it. So I noted that even when I do an open surgery to disconnect, completely mobilize the kidney, skeletonize the renal pedicle, dissect renal pelvis and upper ureter up to the mid ureter and then good job is done. The lymphatic fistula are ligated, not cauterized because they don't get occluded by cautery. There's no platelet in that space. So uh, after a job of about 2-3 hours, patient became alright in the post-operative period but some of them came back with recurrence. So I looked into this that what can I do to prevent recurrence because this is a major surgery. So what we should do and we published an additional step of using omental wrap around the renal pellicle uh, during this operation and we would when we operate these patients we will pull up, we will open the peritoneum, pull up a piece of omentum and wrap it around the renal pellicle and then close it back. And when we did this step and we did this and I would recall and my past experience about I think 13 patients I did with this, none of them recurred afterwards. This was also published long time back. And this also found a mention in our textbook of urology that the momentum can be used here. So uh, thank you very much friends for your patient listening. I hope uh, I have made the concepts of interventional treatment of Kyle to you some clear. And in case you have any question, comment, you can write on my email. Have a good day.